Hello everyone, welcome to the very first cast of Age of Empires 4 game here on youtube.com slash a whole bunch of letters and numbers. My name is Hiwata, coming at you with a game versus one puppy paw spawning up in the top leftish corner of the map versus none other than Hut spawning in the bottom right hand corner down here. Hut is playing the Delhi and puppy paw is playing the Chinese. Now if you're familiar with Age of Empires 4, you will know that the Chinese have a lot of really crazy unique civilization bonuses such as building faster uh, than other civilizations um, as well as a couple other things like the imperial tax collector uh, and when we take a look at what's going on down here for hut um hut is playing the delhi who can get free research from all of their buildings it just takes longer than usual and by building scholars they can increase the speed of their uh research which is why you see right now uh that hut is already building um, already researching rather uh, efficient production a couple other different uh, things as well and has a scholar stationed inside the building already so let's take a look first and see what we're starting out with uh, puppy paw looks like they are starting on a lot of wood focusing a lot on the food and probably going to be using their tax collector to be able to uh, gain 200 gold and age up to the next age when the time is right there's a tax collector right under here behind this tree enjoying some of this time in the sun while his uh his peasants work hard to earn him income over here, however, you see that another mosque is going up for Hut, and um, Hut is investing heavily so far into food and wood, so you get multiple mosques and increases research production um, by, again, building more scholars, station them inside, so on and so forth. He's already got a scholar queued up here, probably going to queue up a couple more to put between the different buildings while this one focuses on uh, research in and of itself. And let's take a look at what each player sees in the map. Um, we got Hut taking a look down here. Trying to see where the neutral trade post is. Um, base is actually a pretty good layout. Let's talk about Hut's base for a second here. Um, forward stone, which is not the best thing in the world, but his gold's pretty secure. He's able to easily kind of wall that off down across here. Whereas when we take a look at our friend across the map, Puppy Paw, um, they are in a similar situation as well, but with a gold well protected. And their stone is actually further back. Now, they haven't scouted this way yet. Uh, but when they do, they're going to realize they're going to have a nice wood line between these mountains here to be able to uh, wall this off if they decide to do that. Um, but we will have to kind of see what happens in a couple minutes here. So for now, um, looks like we are just going to get a lot more economic boom going on here. Um, these are two very high level players. I believe both are top 100 if I'm not mistaken. So if you're uh, looking for some good information about build orders, keep an eye on these guys because they're going to be able to give you some great ideas for playing. Um, interesting to see the Delhi focusing a lot on the berries. Um, the Chinese are also taking the berries as well, kind of saving their sheep for a little bit later. Because sheep are, they can be a little less reliable sometimes if your enemy gets a lot more uh, sheep from the map early. Or if you don't want to focus on having your scout uh, go ahead and get all the sheep and just want to uh, explore their base first, it's a great option to just send your scout directly across the map and not have to worry about sheep too, too much. But we're here finding a lot of success finding sheep right now for Puppy Paw. Um, looks like we're seeing some forward villagers for the Chinese right now. Let's take a look at the whole map and see kind of what's going on here, what our plan is. Um, where are we off to? What are we building here? Where are we going? I guess we'll see in just a moment. We'll, we'll check in on those little guys in a second here after the scout gets a little bit more harass on. Take a look at income per minute right now. We got Puppy Paw ahead with a food and hut just taking in more gold and wood right now. However, that... That was uh, going to change based off of, obviously, what builders are allocated to what. Um, Puppy Pop finally going uh, onto gold and is now ready to age up. Let's take a look at our ally over, or our, rather, our opponent over here, Hut. And Hut is getting very close to aging up as well. Just needs a little bit more food. Um, should be able to get it after the next little berry collection here. Um, these villagers, are they just coming back? What's going on in these vills? Did anyone die? Kind of missed the action there a little bit. But. Okay, so we got another villager across the map over here. Looks like he's trying to go out and get control of the map, get some towers down, um, which is a pretty uh, pretty good reason to start on wood early. Looks like we're transitioning over to get some more uh, lumberjacks onto wood as well to build said towers. Um, but looks like he's being denied some of that space by these scouts, which is a great plan coming out from Hut. Um, let's see what else is going on here. Okay, he's looking to wall in his opponent. So that way he can't get onto the map because Delhi is notorious for being able to use walls with their uh, military units. So, for example, th their uh, men at arms or pikemen can actually go around the map and build walls and defensive structures. Um, I don't believe they can build towers, I'm not mistaken. But right now, Hut doing a good job of uh, keeping an eye on what's going on, understanding um, that he also needs to keep vision on the map 
in order to ensure that he doesn't get walled in or tower rushed or anything like that. Um, still hasn't scouted the uh, base from his opponent just yet, but he will be getting there soon. And uh, almost done aging up here on the Dome of Faith. We already have Puppy Paw in age two because Puppy Paw um, builds buildings a lot more quickly with his Chinese villagers. I believe it's a, what, a 50% increase in building speed. Either way, uh, it's already up and he's already on the next age and so too is Hut. Now we're gonna have a bit of a lull here for a moment. Will the uh, players decide if we're going a fast castle or not, or if we're gonna go into some military aggression? I would imagine, based off of the way that Puppy Paw is playing the Chinese right now, um, that he's gonna be looking to just kind of um, turtle a little bit, get his economy booming, and uh, go for an attack later. Um, Puppy Paw doing some more scouting here. You can see kind of the whole layout of that base. We take a look at Hut sees still nothing over yonder. Trying to take care of this villager and not get totally walled in, but looks like this wall is going to go up successfully unless this spaghetti keeps happening. <laughs> not a very uh, not a very smart villager, not really able to get those walls up very effectively there. Yeah, go around go around the horse. That's, that'll help. So wall incomplete, meaning that uh, Hut is still able to get out on that side of the map. And finally, it looks like Hut's going to go around and try to scout his opponent's base. Um, Sheep-wise, uh, we got a lot of sheep down here for Hut, but a lot more sheep for Puppy Paw up in the top left. What else? We got another scout down here just chilling for Puppy Paw. And yeah, we're just kind of waiting and seeing what's going on here. In for a minute still, Puppy Paw looks like he's taking a little bit of a lead in some resources. Probably spending a lot more than, uh, than Hut is right now. It'll be interesting to see what kind of build hut is going for it looks like he got some of his he's getting sanctity now so he's gonna go for the uh the grab of those sacred sites here in the center of the map if you didn't know uh, as of the most recent patch in age of empires 4 the uh delhi can no longer research sanctity in the first age and instead uh research it in the second age where they can start taking control of sacred sites which a lot of people are complaining about because it's a really big nerf to their uh gameplay however i believe that it's pretty fair uh, Dark Age Sanctity is just kind of a little too powerful for Golden Come uh, at the start of the game. Um, it makes these resources really inaccessible to other people, and you can't convert. Well, you can convert the site to neutral, but you can't actually, you can't actually, you know, claim the site for yourself when that's happening with your opponent. So it doesn't look like anybody's on stone yet. Uh, Puppy Paw still not grabbing his stone, and looks like Hut still also is not grabbing stone. So no one's going for a second TC just yet. Looks like we're both focusing on going up to Castle as soon as possible. But Hut is finally taking control of the map, taking control of the Sacred Site areas. But so too is Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw putting out some archers to try to get control of the map, keep those villagers off from building structures, and two scholars already on the Sacred Site to start capturing it. A good play by Hut, but great uh, knowledge and awareness by Puppy Paw to be able to know what is going to happen when the Delhi push out of this, uh, the map. Now, it looks like the Delhi is also going for a wall up here. Um, is there a villager on the way to build that? An archer. So we already got an archer range out. I guess I missed that going down. Um, looks like he's going into some archers. And he, that archer is going to go up yonder and build a wall to keep uh, Puppy Paw off of this northeast corner of the map. And we got a bit of an engagement going here. Tower uh, getting up before the archers can get on and pick that villager. So uh, this sacred site is going to be claimed once that research finishes. Uh, researching at the um, at the mosque. Seems to be just about to finish for uh, our good friend Hut. But now we have another little fight going with archers versus scouts. Nothing crazy. Um, let's take a look at Puppy Paw's base again. Kind of see what's going on here. Looks like he's just pumping out some archers for now. I'm um, trying to, again, just take control of the map, putting up his own tower, a counter tower, if you will, at the second sacred site in order to ensure that Hut isn't able to take both. But Hut's going to spend this time uh, making sure that this one is well secured. Now, if we take a look at what Hut's up to right now with his resources, he's got 10 on food, 1 on wood, and 5 on gold. Um, interesting to see the amount of the... Oh, he's building plans there to protect himself. Gotcha. Because right now, he's got a... For new players who maybe aren't as familiar with the game, uh, what you need to do when you start chopping down uh, trees in the forest or any other resource that like is expansive, except for berries, so I guess actually only trees, <laughs> is you need to build another uh, lumber camp in order to ensure that your villagers have the shortest drop-off time possible. Rather, travel distance between the gather point of the resource and the drop-off point. So now, he's a lot more effectively able to gather wood in a more perfect manner, and he's got 16 back on there. Puppy Paw still booming back here. Seven on wood. He's not going too crazy into the tower. He's only got the one up on the map right now. Whereas Hut is more incentivized. Incentivized? Incentivized? I don't know. 
uh, to actually gather more wood and build those towers. Um, Mooks is going to go for a forward tower right here. What does he see? What does he see right now? So he doesn't see that this tower is going to be coming up at all. Um, and it's just out of the line of sight of the wall. L those two scouts are going to be able to take care of this uh, villager fairly quickly. Think about what Hut sees. Hut sees obviously everything. Um, and this is going to be a really great control point for Hut to take. Because that way he's able to control this whole side of the map with two different tiers of walls, the enemy wall and his own, as well as a tower. Um, we go back to like a look at the full map. Puppy Pod just popping up. We went for Imperial Academy into Astronomical Clock Tower. So we could very well be seeing some Springolds coming out to fight against the Delhi Sultanate. Now, now that um, there, we go. I was just gonna say, now that he's up to the Castle Age. Uh, people can now also play the sacred site game by building up some of his own religious units and capturing the site um what's uh what's what's hut building behind us we got two ranges right here and we're building up with the house of learning and we took the dome of the faith as our first landmark of course um three of scholars at 50 percent of the cost from the landmark which is awesome house of learning uh grants no immediate bonus other than advancing to the next age it contains many unique economic and religious technologies so a lot of ability to kind of empower his scholar units um, to do more um, but right now not popping up too many units um, just kind of getting ready to boom into that castle age and get his upgrades going and protect his town um, does he have a barracks yet he should no barracks yet it looks like okay um or is he look at puppy paw he also does not have a barracks yet interesting okay well, we take a look at the map here. Still nothing going on at the sacred site here. Nothing going over here. Um, let's take a look at the score, actually. Uh, I don't know the score enabled. Let's do that real quick. All right, we're back. I wasn't able to figure out how to get the score to show up here, unfortunately. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, my God. What a fail. Uh, we got Hut a little bit in the lead right now, score-wise. Um, how many villagers we got? 40 economic villagers versus the uh, 38 of the Chinese, which I think is interesting considering the uh, amount of resource uh, difference that... Puppy Paw is able to pull on on the Chinese right now. Um, really going ham on the food, going ham on the wood. Wood is a really crazy important resource this time around for these players, um, as you can tell. When we look at total resources, recurrent resources, wood is still being prioritized quite heavily, so it's food. Looks like players might even be looking to get an early Imperial Age here uh, before the 15 minute mark. Still, nothing too crazy going on here in the center of the map. Um, it's more so just the aggression happening on the right side of the map. Um, this mill, this hunt being denied by this tower, which is a great play. Um, probably unintentional, honestly. Uh, by, uh, by Hut. But now the Barbican of the Sun is going to be dropped over yonder. Another uh, defensive landmark that has a huge cannon that allows for a lot heavier defense of an area. Good call to put it up this way towards where the enemy is aggressing you already, so that way you're able to ensure that nobody is going to be pushing in and taking total control of your side of the base and flanking in further. Um, I wish there were some more defensive walls coming up from uh, from Puppy Paw on the other side of the map, just to make sure that nothing else was going on here. Um, that's a really annoying notification for him, though, just that arrow fire on that, uh, that mill. But now he's reallocating some villagers over to some other resources right now, it looks like. But he's moving over to another berry bush. He sure is. He's on two TCs now, which is awesome. Um, how many TCs are we on for over here for Puppy Paw? We are on one TC still, but we're just going up to Imp now. We're almost at the Imperial Age, whereas Hut is still a ways behind Imperial. So really, here's where we're going to see um, if the play is going to come out with um, with a prioritization on early military aggression before uh, China's able to get their Imperial Age upgrades, or if he's going to take too long and won't be able to actually push in onto the enemy base. Mind you, there's still the objective of the sacred sites to play. Um, they do grant passive gold income when you have them, and when both are secured, you are enabling a win condition. Now, you may have noticed the Tower Elephants, or the Tower War Elephants. They're supposed to be renamed in this last patch, but unfortunately, they were not. Um, we got another barrier patch down here. Cool. Um, looks like the scout's finally taking a look. Let me see. Just took a look down here and is able to see what's going on with these buildings, so um, that's good. However, what does, uh, what does Puppy Paw see right now? Not too much. Still not too much information as to what military is being built behind it. Um, no towers supporting the wall here to look over, so he won't be able to see things until these guys start pushing up. And the elephants are going to be great for breaking down that wall nice and quick, um, especially when there's multiples of them. Um, looks like those archers are garrisoned inside that tower for now. And I would imagine that we're just going to see some aggression from more elephants for now. Um, another scholar on standby, ready to capture this site, but 
Uh, Puppy Pod being the great player that he is, knows that, okay, I need to reinforce this site quickly. I'm Chinese. I can build towers very fast, so it won't be an issue. Uh, take a look up here. Still units kind of building up. Still a little bit of harassment going on there, denying the hunt. Um, and we take a look at income from a minute. Puppy Paw still ahead for the most part. Um, Hut just... Hut is getting a lot more villagers on food right now. We've got 33 versus the 13 of Puppy Paw. So that's going to mean he's able to pump out a lot more units quickly. The elephants cost 400 food and 600 gold per unit. So on the amount of villagers that he has on those berries, which uh, Delhi do get a buff for when they're gathering from them, um, it's going to be a fairly strong push coming out here. These guys, they're super tanky. They will take a whole bunch of damage uh, from these towers. However, uh, as uh, some of you may not be aware already... Um, oh, never mind. We're getting some action here. The Springle's coming out from the uh, Astrological Clock Tower from the Chinese. They're going to try to snipe down these elephants. Not doing too much damage, but with three of them, they can definitely push them away and back onto the other sacred site to hold that area. Um, this push is denied. Not strong enough. Not enough backing it. It would have been nicer to see some... Um, some infantry mixed in as well to support the uh the war elephants because while these guys can soak up a lot of the damage they're not able to get in quickly and kill these uh these springles let go back look at the military count real quick uh we got hut is ahead in kills in the military um however there is still there's not the whole story unfortunately in this kind of game there's a whole oh wow those springles really got that snipe eh? or that's an expensive unit to lose I don't agree with that push from Hut at all. I think he realizes, yeah, I gotta get some... <laughs> he definitely realizes that he needs some barracks right now. Uh, getting, what is it, seven barracks up right now. I'm um, gonna try to get um, some more units out there. Taking all his villagers off of, I think it's the, the gold or the... Oh, food. He took a lot off of food to build these up. Um, so hopefully a big push that can support the future war elephants that are produced. All right now, he's just chilling, chilling on just one war elephant for now. Um... There's the button for all military. So he's got one war elephant and seven men at arms currently building a significant amount more, which is a great choice. Take a look at Puppy Paws military production right now. Um, ba -ba -bum. He's only got a couple archers and a couple crossbows, and some are garrisoned in the center of the map. Oh, I thought they were. Did he lose them? I guess he must have pulled them back. Where did those Springles get off to? Oh, there they are. So, Puppy Paw finally taking a push against the, uh, the deli, trying to make his case here. And uh, with the resources being in favor, uh, resources gathering right now being in favor of, I'd say it's in favor of Puppy Paw, however, the wooden gold are most important for getting those elephants out. Um, he's getting, he hasn't gotten too many more out actually right now. He's only got the one that's come out. He's still got the one chilling in the center of the map, or did that go all the way around? I think that's actually the same one. Um, so his men at arms are gathering up, getting ready to take this fight. He's got a lot of space to fall back on, um, but reinforcing with more, lots of crossbows. We got what? Seven crossbows. Or nine crossbows and seven uh, regular archers. And a villager at the front to drop. Probably drop some towers and the likes. Um, a whole bunch of clock tower springles are going to be coming out here. Are we upgraded with those? Where's our barracks? So we got, we're in the, the upgrade for the, uh, the iron, un, iron undermesh, which is a good call. Um, however, it is going to be an interesting one considering that he's not actually building into. Um, any of the archery units in his civilization's wheelhouse. Um, he only built a couple war elephants, and the rest are actually going to be all men-at-arms. He's got quite a number of men-at-arms. We should be able to rip through a lot of these, but the Springolds are going to really hold him back right now. Finally, capturing the Sacred State took him long enough, um, but he wanted to make sure that he would be able to make sure to do so. A wall! Interesting. So he's going to make it so he can't push him out of the base. I do like that thought and that idea. I'd like to see a tower up first with a, with a spring of attachment. Just to kind of poke at the wooden line here, make sure builders can't get up to the front. Um, but I digress. We got horsemen mixed in to take care of the, uh, the archers a little bit more quickly. Um, what are our barracks up here? Look like? where, are, where is our barracks? It's right here. We're getting the bloomery. We're getting... Um, we already have all the uh, arrow upgrades or arrow defense. Range defense, rather. Uh, so that's going to be a good call from Hut to make sure that he's not going to do too much damage. So he's men at arms with once. He's probably waiting for Bloomery to actually finish, and then he's going to push this. Right now, he's going to get his units. He's going to start pushing towards the front here. A reinforcing wall right here is a good call just to make sure you can't squeeze in the back line there. Um, but when we take a look at what's going on here, um, behind this, Puppy Paw is able to gather quite a bit of resources. We're looking at 74 villagers for Hut versus 76 for Puppy Paw. So finally being able to boom a little bit. We're on still just. Okay, finally got a second TC, TC up not too long ago, um, whereas Hut is still on two as well. 
um, where the most of his action is happening at the front. He's going to go around. He broke his own wall to go around the flank over here and try to get the snipe on the Springle. I don't know if I agree with that play. I think his men at arms should be trying to take the fight against these crossbowmen, but I guess you got to get rid of these first in order to successfully um, hold off the push. All right, there's more reinforcements coming in. He's still trickling in some more crossbows, some more springholds. I don't like how there's not really too much to soak up any damage. Once these um, once these guys are able to push in and take these fights on the springholds, it's going to be really troublesome. He's going to lose quite a number of springholds, probably. Heavy men, melee infantry, heavy men at arms upgraded. Um, we got veteran archers as well. Um, we do have um, both, sorry, rather both of them are still in the castle age. No one's gone up to end just yet. Let's see what Hut does here. He's going to drop a keep and great timing on this push. Deny the keep. That's not going to be able to get up. You want to take care of those villagers first, Hut, or else you're going to get absolutely shnapped. You really don't want this keep going up. You need to prioritize to get the sprinkles and those guys. Uh, the villagers building the keep down there. This looks like a very winnable and easy fight for the Delhi. This could be GG if he's able to push out behind this. There's not too much back at, uh, at Puppy Paw's base holding off uh, any kind of aggression. But now that he's behind his own wall, he's able to position his uh, his clock tower uh, springles and get some more picks. But he's deciding, you know what, I'm going to pull all the way back. Um, it's not worth losing more. Could have stayed and gotten another couple picks or so. But then just sheer numbers. The sheer mass of military units. We got 92 for Hut versus the 35. 35 for um, for Puppy Paw. So these horses are gonna be able to catch up nice and quick. Uh, take care of these uh, spinners most likely. Crossbow's taking up a lot of the damage from these springles. Probably not <laughs> not great to stop there, honestly. Uh, but he wanted to make sure his walls were able to get up first. But I think this might be GG. I don't see a world where this is able to be a winning situation for China. Let's take a look here. Able to get past the wall with that. He's gonna be able to keep pushing in. He has no other military going on right now. Take a look. 18 military versus the 97 still of hut. Not able to snipe anything. These builders are gonna be killed. Wall denied. Stone walls too. Probably should have started with the front stone wall first, just to make sure that he was able to get his uh, military units out. Rather, uh, keep the enemy military units out. It was like just barely done too. Uh, but now the Delhi going to be able to capture the sacred site, and no matter what, there's going to be a win condition here where China either has to boom again and push out and recapture the sacred sites, or lose all the units right here. And it looks like we are choosing the latter option. Um, down to 86 military versus 12. Not going to be a very winnable situation. At the That's going to be GG's, I think. I don't think there's too much more that he can really do. Where is the rest of Hudson military, anyways? It's all back here still? Gotcha. Just going to go up. He was making sure that there was nothing that was going to come around and take the, uh, the sacred site from him. Yeah, there's not too much uh, in this game, unfortunately. Get some free villager kills. There's a clock tower bombard coming out. Too little, too late, though. Not going to be able to successfully get that online. Uh, it's going to see a burn down very quickly. Able to get some good damage on the men at arms and is getting repaired by the villagers, but it's just not enough to take care of uh, what's going on here. These war elephants are having a hard time passing through this very small walkway, it looks like, with the men at arms as well. Um, which does kind of delay the inevitable for Puppy Paw, but still. He's got nothing going on. Take a look at the income per minute. Hut is gathering so much behind this still. Oh, and actually, he was able to do a visual glitch with Puppy Paw. He was up to the interior as we saw before, but it doesn't matter too, too much because uh, Hut was able to build a lot more behind it, and that is game. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. My name has been Hiwata. I really appreciate your time. If you liked the video, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'll see you later. Bye.